I made clear that after the pause, it was imperative that Israel put in place clear protections for civilians uh, and for sustaining humanitarian assistance. There are ways to accommodate them. Um, and this is going to be very important going forward. All right, time to bring in the panel. We're joined now by Trey Gowdy, former congressman from South Carolina, Leslie Marshall, Democratic strategist, and former Secretary of Education, Bill Bennett. Welcome to you all. Um, Trey, there's been a lot of grumbling from critics, especially this week, about their perception that the Biden administration's support for Israel taking up the ground war again in Gaza waning. What do you think? I, I just think the, the, the Biden administration is trying to, to wage a politically correct war. I mean, you've got one group, Jillian, who actually targets civilians. They use civilians as shields. They behead children. And then the group that tries to minimize civilian casualties is the group being lectured to. There is no statute of limitations when it comes to beheading a child. None. So we spent 20 years finding the people that, did, that, that wronged us on 9-11. Let's give Israel at least two months. Is that too much to ask? Two months to go extract their revenge. Uh, Leslie, someone leaked a transcript of Secretary of State Blinken talking to his counterpart this week. Take a look at this. Uh, Blinken appearing to sort of push the Israelis to scale back their military plan for southern Gaza. Uh, uh, Israel's defense minister says the entire Israeli society is united now behind the goal of dismantling Hamas, even if it takes months. Blinken, I don't think you have the credit for that. What do you mean <laughs> of that? Well, when we write the checks uh, to help their military and uh, provide weapons, you know, maybe there's some, uh, some merit to that. When you ask over a million people to move from the north to the south to be safe. And that corridor that many of them used, and, and many of them were on foot, only way they could get there, uh, was also bombed, which resulted in now close to 5,000 children. We know that over half of the population of Gaza are under 18 years of age. Well, where do the people that went from the north to the south go if Israel starts, starts bombing the south? With regard to opinion, we're seeing opinion uh, against uh, Israel increasing. It's almost split now in the United States, and, and it wasn't that way just a few weeks ago. We're seeing opinion throughout the world uh, being more pro-Palestinians and pro-ceasefire. We're seeing leaders, whether it be Brazil, Spain, France, and others uh, that are speaking out and, and saying the same. So I think with regard to what the United States is saying, the world might be saying, because people are questioning how many of these individuals are Hamas, because we know that these dead children certainly are not. So, Bill, that is true, what Leslie said. More than a million Palestinians have moved south inside Gaza. But how are the Israelis to take out the tunnel system that Hamas has built underneath the entire southern part of the Gaza Strip um, if they're not allowed to use military force? They have to be allowed, and I don't even think allowed is the right word. They do what they have to do. Uh, look, what Leslie said is true. But let's not talk about the Gazans as poor, innocent victims. Read what uh, the literature is in their schools. It's all anti-Semite, anti-Jew. Uh, what, uh, what the IDF is doing, what Israel is doing, is waging a war for civilization uh, and the West. Uh, and we are waning, unfortunately. Uh, and so is a lot of the rest of the world, as Leslie pointed out. And that's a bad thing, because now Israel being attacked from... Uh, uh, from one side by Hamas and from Hezbollah, the other side, we should be mounting our defenses, increasing our efforts, and certainly increasing our support for Israel. This is not just a fight about Israel. This is a fight about Western civilization. I um, want to turn our attention to something else that happened today here in Washington, grabbing a lot of uh, headlines. That's the expulsion of Congressman George Santos, he became the 21st member of Congress today to ever be expelled by his colleagues. Turns out 17 of those 21 were actually uh, expulsions for, quote, disloyalty to the union during the Civil War. So it has been a minute since that happened. Trey, was this healthy for the nation? Was this a disaster? What do you make of it? You know, I served on the House Ooh. Ethics Committee. I have, I guess, a minority view when it comes to this, Julian. Uh, I, I, I think the standard for serving in Congress is higher than narrowly avoiding indictment. I, I think the standard for staying in Congress is, is more than narrowly outpacing an indictment. 
So yeah, you're entitled to due process, Julian. If the state wants to put you in prison, you're entitled to due process. But I'll tell you what, you and I don't get a jury trial every time we're not picked to guest host something. You and I don't get a jury trial every time we're not promoted at work. You don't get a jury trial on whether or not the House says you violated House rules. He was voted out unanimously by the House Ethics Committee, and then his peers said, we don't want you around. The House decides who stays there, not a jury of 12 people, not the judicial branch. So to that point, Leslie, are Democrats now obligated to take up the expulsion of Senator Menendez? And if the answer is no, as I suspect it might be, not trying to put words in your mouth, tell us why, what the difference is. Well, honestly, there are many people uh, in my party that have talked about expulsion. If you look at the numbers, Democrats are kind of split, you know, half and half as to supporting him or, or wanting to expel him. So, sorry, the wrong words that you, you put there because uh, those aren't the ones coming out of my mouth. With regard to George Santos, I'm sorry, he conned. He conned his, his constituents, he conned his contributors, he conned Congress, and over 300, not 12 on a jury, over 300 of his peers, Republicans as well, said it was time to go. Third time yeah. was a charm. I think this was a service not only to the Republican Party, but to the body of Congress, and both Democrats and Republicans uh, need uh, to call out their own uh, if they're cons like this. And Leslie, you're not obviously alone as a Democrat. We saw a bill today, a couple of Democrats voted uh, against the, uh, they, they right. voted to keep him out, to expel him uh, as well. A couple of Democrats voted to keep him in. So mixing a party lines here. Yeah, if I could just say something. He lied his way into Congress. He should be thrown out. No problem. Doesn't need to be litigated. Uh, you know, we don't have to have kids lit, uh, go to court uh, in order for parents to get permission to spank them. There are some things we can do without litigating. If we have to litigate everything, we're done as a society. But now that we got rid of a guy who lied his way to get in, let's get rid of some of the people who are lying in order to stay in. Interesting, the sage Senator Fetterman from Pennsylvania talked about Bob Menendez and how he needs to leave. But that's just the beginning. There are an awful lot of lies being told by people in the Congress. And uh, Democrats better look at themselves. Trey, so talk the politics of this to us. Uh, what does this mean going forward? How long, you know, you think is it going to take Governor Kathy Hochul to actually get the seat filled? Where is it going? Well, uh, it, it, it depends. Um, that's probably going to be a Democrat seat, so not very long. Uh, when Kevin McCarthy leaves, it will take Gavin Newsom a long time to call for a special election there. They have a razor thin margin now. It's down to two. I mean, they couldn't get along, Jillian, when they had like a five or six person <laughs> majority. It's down to two. And a couple of those may leave for like professional wrestling or OnlyFans or something else. It, Mike Johnson has the worst job. Kevin McCarthy is the luckiest person on the face of the earth. <laughs> I wonder if he would agree with you. I suspect he might. He seems pretty happy, you know, post uh, the speakership. Seems to be doing well. We had an interview with him last week. He seemed in good spirits. He was very sort of circumspect about everything he'd been through. Uh, panel, thanks so much for joining us tonight. we got to leave it there.